have faith in yourself. Have faith that you are exactly where you are supposed to be in life. Have faith that you are moving in the exact direction of your greatest hopes and dreams. Have faith, as Dr. King put it, to take the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. You may not know what is around the corner, but know that you are perfectly equipped with the right skills and tools to encounter any life, anything life will throw at you. As I look out at this extraordinary class of bachelor's and master's degree candidates, I'm excited for you and your futures. You have a long and open road in front of you to make your life what you want it to be. I want, I can't wait to follow your journeys and learn about what you accomplish as College of Charleston graduates. Congratulations, class of 2019. As part of our ceremony, we have the honor to recognize individuals who have also stood out in their careers, representing the high values of leadership and service that we cherish here on our campus. Ladies and gentlemen, for the conferring of honorary degrees, I will now be joined by Board of Trustee Chair, Mr. David Hay. Trustee Steve Swanson and Lauren Birch, would you please escort Mr. William A. Finn to the lectern? I am honored to introduce William A. Finn. Throughout his illustrious career in the field of business, he has worked tirelessly to serve his community and state, consistently giving of his time and talent to mentor students and provide them with meaningful learning experiences. By doing so, he has prepared countless students for leadership roles in society and transformed their lives. I hereby present William A. Finn, an active member of the Charleston community for more than four decades. William has, was a successful executive who worked for Aston Johnson in leadership roles for more than th three decades. He retired as CEO in 2006 and since then, he has been sharing his wisdom and experience with the college. William was one of the first members of the College of Charleston School of Business Board of Governors and is actively invested in the Shotland Scholar Program. He was honored by the School of Business at the College of Charleston on its Wall of Honor. William and his wife Prudence were inducted into the college's Bishop Robert Smith Society in fall 2019. William continues to play an active role in the community and is current treasurer of the SCETV Endowment and chairman of Turning Leap Project. William A. Finn, your contribution on behalf of the college is remarkable and honorable. The College of Charleston is proud to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By the authority of the State of South Carolina, granted to the Board of Trustees of the College of Charleston and committed to me, I declare William A. Finn is now admitted to the honorary degree of Doctor of Human Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining.
Congratulations, Dr. Finn. Trustee Chuck Baker, would you please escort Ms. Michelle Y. Mangum to the lectern? I'm honored to introduce Michelle Y. Mangum. During her time at the college, Michelle Y. Mangum was an all-star student athlete and scholar, excelling on and off the court. She exemplified what it means to be a College of Charleston Cougar. Since graduating, she has had an illustrious career in finance in which she has broken glass ceilings, paved the way for women who have come after her, and received numerous awards. I hereby present Michelle Y. Mangum, a financial advisor, retirement plan consultant, and wealth management specialist. Michelle was the first female domestic over-the-counter trader at E.F. Hutton. She continued to break barriers on Wall Street, and in 1999, she joined Smith Barney, where she achieved the level of vice president and was awarded blue chip council status five years in a row. She was the first female in that branch of 50 total advisors. From there, Michelle achieved vice president status at Raymond James and was awarded president council status. In 2015, she joined Lakeview Capital Partners, where she serves as managing director, equity partner, and sits on the investment committee. Michelle was a proud member of the college's champion volleyball team that won divisionals, regionals, and ultimately went to nationals. Michelle Y. Mangum, your professional achievement in finance is impressive and honorable. The College of Charleston is proud to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By the authority of the State of South Carolina granted to the Board of Trustees of the College of Charleston and committed to me, I declare Michelle Y. Mangum is now admitted to the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Mangum. First of all, happy holidays to all of you, and uh, what great presents you've given to yourselves and your families by graduating from this university today. Um, I want to say uh, basically good afternoon as well. Thank you, President Shu, Board of Trustees, staff, parents, and friends. Congratulations, class of 2019. I am honored and humbled to be here today and be involved in the centennial anniversary of women being admitted to the college. I don't take this responsibility lightly, yes. I don't take this responsibility lightly. Today it is my hope that I can impart a little wisdom to take with you into the next chapters of your lives. I had the pleasure of meeting President Xu in September, and after speaking with him a while, a while, he mentioned my speaking at the commencement, and I thought 
this academic, he had to be joking. He has NASA and Rolls Royce and a master's from Georgia Tech and a, and a, and a PhD from Georgia Tech. And I was like, there's, there's, he really is kidding. <laughs> and uh, then I received my invitation in the mail and my name was spelled correctly. It, it wasn't Misty, it wasn't Missy, it wasn't Mitzi with a Z, it wasn't Misty Magnum, it wasn't Morgan, it was spelled correctly. Um, the important thing in my invitation, he said that he remembered that I had been here um, recently for a volleyball reunion and he actually apologized that the college had not provided with us with a win. I know. The important message here is that he actually heard me and learned what really quickly what was important to me. Uh, my LinkedIn page, um, this is my only commercial for my business, my LinkedIn page actually has a quote from Dalai Lama, which I'm sure many of you have heard before, that when you talk, you're only repeating what you know, but when you listen, you may learn something new. In listening to President Xu, I learned that we have one thing in common, and that is that we are both very passionate about the college and what a liberal arts school can do for you. As you leave here today, you are prepared to be open-minded. You have learned practical skills as well as the ability to apply knowledge and skills in the real world. Class of 2019, you're graduating at a time in our country, or when our country is the most divisive and polarized in my lifetime, and that's why it is your time. You aren't afraid to speak out. You have the right to speak your mind. Speak your mind, but in doing so, you don't have to be cruel. You recently protested a video joking about slavery. Your class has embraced issues regarding food insecurity and student hunger, and in doing so, you have championed a swipe away hunger campaign and there's now a cougar pantry. You have wrapped your arms around issues regarding sustainability, inclusion, and diversity, just to name a few. This college, the most beautiful campus in the state of South Carolina, is embracing a documentary that will be coming out next year, which is the 250th anniversary of this great school. But that documentary reflects some of the, the not so beautiful parts of this college's past. The College of Charleston is now made up of students of 48 states and 62 countries. It's quite different from when I attended here in the late 1900s. <laughs> I'm a visual person, so what I'd like you to think about, a lot of you have seen these memes, and for the older people who memes are these, well, you'll just have to look it up. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I'd like you to think about the meme of the caterpillar and the butterfly. And today is the only day I actually get to be the butterfly. And I know some of my friends are envisioning me with wings and things of that nature. And today, the graduates, you, you are caterpillars. The other thing I want you to think about is that you have, regardless of whether you went to school here three years, four years, four and a half years or more, you have been going in and out of Porter's Lodge. I actually have a picture of Porter's Lodge in my office. And when you go through those gates, in Latin, it is written, know thyself. It's a very important message, and it's one that I didn't take very seriously until I left here. President Xu said that hopefully my, story, my stories will inspire you to embrace whatever comes your way. This is how my story begins. Upon graduation, when many people are taking vacation or just trying to figure out what they're doing or maybe headed off to interviews, I was actually flown to New York City, a wide-eyed kid who'd never traveled further south than Florida and had never been any further north than North Carolina. I checked into my hotel. I uh, didn't sleep at all. I was being, I, I, I think I forgot to tell you I was flown to New York City. Um, I didn't sleep. I was told I had to be at the office at 7.30 in the morning. I literally got up, I, I looked out the window at the office, this behemoth of a huge black glass building. I saw this turnstile. This turnstile was going so fast and I thought to myself, wow, I graduated with a degree and nobody's told me how to get in there and actually make it through the other side of the door. I had never seen a turnstile going this fast. Well, obviously I made it through. I was uh, then escorted upstairs to E.F. Hutton's uh, trading floor. There were men everywhere. It was a sea of men, like 
you, hopefully you will never see again because hopefully there are some women in those businesses. Um, but one of the things, besides the amount of men, the, one of the things that just grabbed, just, I was like, oh my Lord, the ceilings were really, really low. And, and back then, all the wiring was either in the ceilings or under the floor, so they could push them out. Well, these, the other thing that caught my eye was that the, these ceilings all had these brown rings on them. Well, that was from the coffee pots with the stains above their desk. The rest of the ceilings were gray from cigarette smoke and ash, ashtrays. To this day, I don't drink coffee and I have never smoked cigarettes. Okay, they quickly walked me back to the back of the floor to meet the only two female traders. I thought, are these women quarantined? Why aren't they in the back of the building? Actually, they were international traders. One woman was Chinese and she spoke 12 languages. The other woman was German and she spoke five languages. And then there was me, I spoke English, Southern, and un poquito Espanol. <laughs> After the greeting, I was whisked downtown, I mean, yeah, downstairs, excuse me, and I was told I was headed to the New York Stock Exchange. I thought, wow, this is really cool. I'm headed to the New York Stock Exchange. I went to the E.F. Hutton Post. I was given a white jacket with E.F. Hutton in blue letters across my chest, and I thought, wow, this is a great time for a selfie. But we didn't know what a selfie was, and we didn't have cell phones. So I was... Then I was taught the hand signals um, by the traders to actually run into the pit or to the post and buy, buy stocks. And so I just thought this was a lesson. Then uh, the market opened at 930, which it's done for many, many years. And five minutes later, I was told to go in and buy 100,000 shares of IBM stock. I did it. I ran in there. I bought the stock. I ran back out as if I was crossing the finish line, hold my hands up, high-fiving. And then these guys said, well, what price? And I went, shh. Wow. I had forgot this piece of critical information. Um, and they were laughing, but they weren't laughing at me. But they were laughing because they had been training trader trainees to do this for many years, but nobody would do it. They weren't brave enough to run in there to do it. Being a student athlete here prepared me to be ready to do whatever was, whatever was asked of me without question. The next few weeks were of intense training to be the first female domestic trainer at E.F. Hutton. After training, I moved to Charlotte, North, North Carolina, where my role was that of an assistant trader. Just like today, in 1986, the markets were at all-time highs. Um, fears of recession were looming. Lesson, there will always be people in the recession camp. Interest rates were low. It's all relative. It was 9.5% back then. 16 months later, my world changed and, and basically, my, I thought my world really had changed forever. September was bad, and then October 16th was now Black Friday. This is in 1987. My trading desk lost $700,000 that day. That weekend, I just knew I was going to lose my job. That Monday, which is now, and, and, and I, I call all of this my baptism by fire. That Monday, I went in and my boss at the time was recovering. He was the first quadruple bypass recipient in the state of North Carolina, and that had happened six months earlier. So Black Monday, he went home because he wasn't feeling well. We lost an additional million dollars that day. I was forced to actually be acting as a trader on that day. By the end of the week, we were only down $200,000. We had lost the least of any trading desk at E.F. Hutton, and I believe there were seven. I was given my own list of stocks. I was now the youngest over-the-counter trader at E.F. Hutton at age 23. Next to me, uh, in age, was a gentleman who was 27 from Columbia University, not South Carolina. The majority of traders, uh, traders back then were from Ivy League schools or NYU, certainly not the College of Charleston. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. By the end of 1987, E.F. Hutton was literally taken under. I was still young enough at the time that it was easy for me to tr transition, so I moved to Atlanta and worked for Robinson Humphrey, where I was made a bank trader. Two years later, we suffered. A, we went through the mini crash. In 1997, there was a mini crash, and then there was a tech bubble of 2000. Right before 2000 is when I changed sides from the trading side to the uh, advisory side. I, I was a trader for 13 years only because they said women only last 10 years on that side, so I was not going to leave after 10 years, of course. 
Then September 11th of 2001 changed our lives forever. When I went to Robinson Humphrey, I was a bank trader, and several of the tra traders who trained me went to a firm called Sandler O'Neill. Sandler O'Neill is, is a premier and still a premier bank trading firm. Sandler O'Neill was the 104th floor of the second tower. They lost 66 individuals that day, three of which trained me, and, and five I called friends. More recently, <clears throat> More recently, we had, the, we had the financial crisis of 2008. Remember, God doesn't give us anything we can't handle. There have been many times in my career when it would have been easier to throw in the towel and give up. I've had many painful setbacks, but giving up is not who I am. I have learned that through crisis comes clarity, and clarity precedes success. You have to get back up and fight another day. Crisis and failure failures make you change direction. Like the market, what goes up must come down, and no matter how high you rise, you will at some point fail. Don't fear failure. Embrace it, learn from it, find out who you are and not what you want to be. Know thyself, it's a call to action. My time at the college fine-tuned my skill set to run with the bulls, but I didn't do it alone. I could not have done any of this alone without my friends. The college has provided me with many lifelong friends. Some of my teammates, FIMU sisters, coaches are represented here today. I have my oldest friends here with me today. I have my newest friends here with me today. Some of my friends could not be here because it's flu season. Uh, my father unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but I know he's here with me in spirit. My parents instilled in my brother and I that we could do anything, we could be or do anything we wanted to, but it would take hard work and determination. Those values have served us well. I'd like a shout out to my mother, who last year, who last year at the age of 80 for her birthday saved my brother and I a lot of money because she decided she just wanted to jump out of a plane. So, if, if my brother and I didn't look like her, I would say she's not our mother because we are afraid of heights and sit in an aisle seat in a perfectly good plane, much less jump out of one. In writing this speech, I've had 30 or more revisions. Now I know it's about 70 or more revisions. My friends and my mother have said, you can do this, and I'm sure it will be great. Class of 2019, you can do this, and you will be great. Learn from your mistakes. Remember that people want to be validated. Surround yourself with people who make you grow and make you feel valuable in all aspects of your lives. In turn, you should do the same for them. This combination will serve you well. Einstein said, strive not to be a success, but rather a value. You have amazing futures ahead of you. Remember who you are and what you believe. Don't let anyone tell you your voice doesn't matter and that you have nothing to say. Take what you have learned here and apply it to your own life and the lives of others. Challenge yourself to spend time with people that don't look like you or think like you. Talk openly and honestly, but more importantly, listen. Embrace diversity. There is always more than one way to be and to think. Class of 2019, your time as a caterpillar has expired. Your wings are ready. Look around you. It might be this class that finds a cure for cancer or at least goes after Big Pharma who likely already has the cure. You may put an end to the opioid crisis, make racism a thing of the past, and put an end to gun violence. I know this is a lot, but it is, but it, but it is your time. You can do this. It might as well be you. Go out there, be great, do what you love, work hard at it, and you will be rewarded. Pursue your dreams and passions, but remember, nothing will work unless you do. The college is behind you. Whether you're an, an athlete or in a fraternity or a sorority does not matter now. You are all now part of something bigger. You are an alumni of the College of Charleston. Ask for help. Ask for introductions. You have no idea how well received this college is until someone asks you where you went to college. We've got you now. 
Go out there, get them. Congratulations, class of 2019. Thank you all. God bless this college and this great country we live in. Give yourselves a hand, Cougars. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mangum. Your speech was great, and you are great, and we're so fortunate to have you here um, to, to join us in celebrating our graduation today. So let's thank Dr. Mangum again. I am Fran Welch. I'm provost here at the College of Charleston. And on behalf of the faculty and staff of the college, I congratulate our graduates and their families and friends. At this afternoon ceremony, um, we will um, graduate many students, and we're so very proud of all of you. So congratulations again. And now please welcome Mikey Zinn, president of the Graduate Student Association. Mikey will be speaking on behalf of the candidates assembled here today. Good afternoon. I am Mikey Zinn, president of the Graduate Student Association. And I am honored to have the opportunity to speak before you today, representing both the undergraduate and graduate student bodies. I would like to begin by first welcoming to campus the family members, friends, and guests of today's graduates, especially those who have traveled long distances to be with us. Though today would still be memorable otherwise, your presence makes this occasion even more special for all those receiving degrees today. So thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your time in Charleston, and I wish you safe travels back home when you return. To today's graduates, this celebration marks a major change in your lives. You soon will have your hard-earned degree. But this change, this degree, is a new beginning for all of you, not an ending. And it is just the beginning of many more changes which you will experience as you all contribute to your communities in the future. Sir Winston Churchill noted, to improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. So as you begin this next phase of your life, do not be afraid to embrace both the anticipated and unanticipated changes which lie ahead for you. Strive for perfection, but never quit improving. Congratulations on behalf of the entire student body here at the college, and I wish you all well in your future endeavors, wherever they may lead you. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Michael Renault, class of 1995, who will speak on behalf of the Alumni Association. Good afternoon and welcome. It's such an honor to be here to participate in your uh, graduation today. As president of the Alumni Association, I want to welcome all of you, our newest members, and invite you to join our family of over 93,000 alumni of the College of Charleston. You will be a member of an alumni association that was founded in 1888 and exists to promote the welfare of the College of Charleston. This is your alumni association, and I encourage you to become actively involved. This is your time and it's your college. Take advantage of everything the Alumni Association and the college has to offer. As you get ready to start this new phase of your life, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you as someone who participated in, in commencement a very long 24 years ago, but during December as well. First, make the most of the education that you received here. You are well prepared for whatever path life leads you on. The friends you made here will be some of the best friends that you will ever have. My circle of friends demonstrates that. Stay connected with each other and with the college. Come by, back for alumni weekends, come back for a Charleston affair every year and all the other wonderful events on campus throughout the year. 
get involved. We have 40 alumni clubs throughout the U.S. and overseas, and we're adding more every year. If your career takes you to a city with a club, get involved. If there's not a club in your area, talk to us and let's get one started there. Give back. Keep up the philanthropic spirit after graduation because it's our duty to give back to our alma mater and to make those who come after us enjoy the same fantastic experience that all of us have, uh, have had here. There's a tradition involving your class rings. Before graduation, all the students wear their ring with the seal facing in. But at your graduation today, the ring is turned so that the seal faces out. This indicates that you are now an alumni, all alumni of the College of Charleston and prepared to go out into the world. So please turn your rings around now, those that have. Congratulations and good luck to all of you. Please remember your alumni association and all alumni will always be here for you. And lastly, but certainly not uh, least, I'd like to thank and recognize all of the, mem the members of the Student Alumni Associates who are serving as the marshals for this afternoon's commencement. This ceremony would not be possible without their dedicated service, so thank you to them as well. Thank you, Michael. Now for the reason we're here today, the awarding of the ceremony. I will have Chair David Hay, Provost Welch, Dr. Mangum, Dean of the Graduate School, Godfrey Gibson, and Executive Vice President of Student Affairs, Alicia Caudill, assist with me with the master's degree presentation. Professor Susan Catwell, uh, Catwinkle from the Department of Theater and Dance will announce the names and majors of our master's candidates. For the School of Education, Health, and Human Performance, Courtney Howard, Dean of the School of Education, Health, and Human Performance, will invest the hoods. Joining us on stage will be Professor Ann Gutschel, Chair of the Department of Teacher Education, and Professor Laura Turner, Director of the Master of Arts in Teaching Performing Arts Education. For the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching Performing Arts Education, Ashley Nicole Glor Baker. Ms. Baker has received the Outstanding Student Award for her program. For the degree of Master of Education in Languages, Dean Howard will be joined by Timothy Johnson, Dean of the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs. For the degree of Master of Education in Languages, Katherine Phillips. Ms. Phillips has received the Outstanding Student Award for her program. For the degree of Master of Education in Teaching, Learning, and Advocacy, Kate Lauren Paulson. Katherine Richards. Nancy Khalil Vitali. Ms. Vitali has received the Outstanding Student Award for her program. For the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Gibbs Knotts, Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, will invest the hoods. Joining us on stage will be Professor Jason Coy, Director of the Master of Arts in History, Michael Duvall, Ch Director of the Master of Arts in English, and Professor Michael Lee, Director of the Master of Arts in Communication. For the degree of Master of Arts in Communication, Katie Barbara McFarland. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, Mindy Lee Buchanan King. 
Buchanan King has received the Outstanding Award for Student Award for her program. For the degree of Master of Arts History, Julia Lynn Rogers. For the degree of Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing, Andrew Gardner Dorton. Catherine Starlet Jones. For the degree of Master of Public Administration, Kevin Bryant. For the School of Sciences and Mathematics, Sebastian Van Delden, Dean of the School of Sciences and Mathematics, will invest the hoods. Joining us on stage will be Professor Renee McCauley, Director of the Master of Science in Computer and Information Sciences, Professor Annette Watson, Director of the Master of Science in Environmental and Sustainability Studies, and Professor Martin Jones, Professor of Mathematics. For the degree of Master of Science in Computer and Information Sciences, Nathaniel William Crumpley. For the degree of Master of Science in Environmental and Sustainability Studies, Dean Van Delden will be joined by Gibbs Knotts, Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Lindsay Catherine Beard. Ms. Beard has received the Outstanding Student Award for her program. <laughs> Casey Conrad. For the degree of Master of Science in Marine Biology, Megan Emily Riley. For the degree of Master of Science in Mathematical Sciences, T. Liu. Thank you, everyone. By the authority of the state of South Carolina, granted to the Board of Trustees of the Graduate School of the University of Charleston, South Carolina, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Education, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Public Administration, and Master of Science as appropriate, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations to all the master's degree recipients. <laughs> Next, we will award the Artium Baccalaureatus degree, or the AB degree. At the College of Charleston, the AB degree in classics requires significant coursework in both Greek and Latin, while the AB degree in all other majors requires significant coursework in ancient Greek or Latin. School of Languages Cultures and World Affairs Dean Timothy Johnson will join us on stage. The College of Charleston has awarded this degree for more than two centuries. That grand tradition continues today. Will the following candidate please come to the dais? Amy Barron, 
a major in classics. I ask those on stage to remain seated. However, it is the tradition that the audience and all the graduates stand when this degree is awarded. Would all the audi audiences please rise? It is also our tradition that the AB degree is awarded in Latin. For those of you who do not understand Latin, do not despair because neither do I. <laughs> in, in fact, believe me, I'm certainly glad that it's not awarded in Greek. Curatoribus <laughs> autoritatem tribu antibus hos euenis in humanatorialbus literis praeclaris eruditos and ad gradum atrium baccalaureatus admisi. Congratulations. <laughs> you may all be seated. Thank you. Next, we will award our bachelor's degrees. Professor Catwinkle will read the names of our bachelor's candidates. Assisting with the graduates from the School of the Arts will be Associate Dean Todd McNerney. For the bachelor's degree in art history, joining us will be Professor Mary Beth Heston, Chair of the Department. Amanda Grace Cox. For the bachelor's degree in arts management, joining us will be Professor Kate Keeney, representing the department. Charlotte Grace Basala, cum laude. John Pierce DeGross. Tremaine Jaquan Dennis. Morgan Lynn McCoy. Gabriella Rose Plyler, magna cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in dance, joining us will be Professor Gretchen McLean, representing the department. Bethany Rupert, summa cum laude, also meets the requirements for psychology. For the bachelor's degree in studio art, joining us will be Professor Sarah Frankel, chair of the department. Natalie Elwood, cum laude, also meets requirements for business administration. Taylor Jane Moody, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in theater, joining us will be Professor Janine McCabe, chair of the department. Charles Dalton Lemax. Kayla Porter, cum laude. <laughs> Assisting with the graduates from the School of Business will be Dean Alan Shaw. For the bachelor's degree in accounting, joining us will be Professor Roger Daniels, chair of the department. Adrienne Janine Almonds. Mariana Pereira de Andraj. <laughs> Irina Yogorova. Ambria Johnson, Jonathan Knox, Jamie Caroline Lista, magna cum laude, Ian McCombs, Eric Don Richards, Jr., Maria Claret Urbina Salgado, summa cum laude, also meets the requirements for supply chain management, Juliet Catherine Zimmer, for the bachelor's degree in business administration, joining us will be Professor Carrie Blair Messel, chair of the department. Jessica Ray Ballou. Robert Edwin Kammer. Joseph D. Delaney III. Patrick Morris Finkelstein. 
Bernal Jackson, Jesse Aaron Miller, Selena Mua, Victoria A. Pearson, Michaela Lynn Rohner, James Boykin Sloan III, James Russell Thompson, DeAndre Thrillkill, Stephen Swift Walker II. For the bachelor's degree in economics, joining us will be Professor Calvin Blackwell, chair of the department. Megan Randolph Posey. For the bachelor's degree in finance, joining us will be Professor Weishan Wang, chair of the department. Troy Bonnet Fensel. George Logan Kennedy IV. Shelby Lonza. John Patrick McArdle. Griffin McLarty. Anthony Joseph Sinecropi. For the bachelor's degree in international business, joining us will be Professor Carrie Blair Messel, chair of the department. Parker Grant Brewer, summa cum laude. James Glasgow, Jr. Mark Alexander Zulowski. For the bachelor's degree in marketing, Aaron Ann Rose Innes, summa cum laude. Elizabeth Y. Vitetta. Ryan McKenna Weatherford, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in supply chain management, Bailey Kendrick. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Education, Health, and Human Performance will be Interim Dean Courtney Howard. For the bachelor's degree in early childhood education, joining us will be Professor Ann Gutchell, Chair of the Department. Sarah Elizabeth Day, magna cum laude. Kayla M. Joy. For the bachelor's degree in elementary education, Erin Marie Pipkin, cum laude. Austin Wells. Dakesha Amonti White, summa cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in exercise science, joining us will be Professor Wes Dudgeon, chair of the department. Brianna Imani Bright, cum laude. Ryan Callahan. Tajanique Nicole Collins-Williams. Shelby Elizabeth Grimm. Gara Simone Hopper. Catherine Carroll, cum laude. Angela Christine Luttrell. Alyssa K. Mariano. Tyler Allen Pratt. Sean Gregory Reichard. Morgan Marie Snyder. Anna Marie Urbano. For the bachelor's degree in middle grades education, rejoining us will be Professor Ann Gutchell, chair of the department. Alexandria Manley. For the bachelor's degree in public health, rejoining us will be Professor Wes Dudgeon, chair of the department. Amber Renee Banks. Leanne Elizabeth Brown. Charles Carroll Cross. Taj Cummings. Stephanie Gonzalez. Asia A. Harrison. Alyssa Jane Konicki. Nicole Marcel Lavordia. Kanaya Monique Williamson. For the bachelor's degree in special education, rejoining us will be Professor Ann Gutchell, chair of the department. Lydia Nicole Bussey, summa cum laude. Ryan Timothy Cartier also meets requirements for history. Victoria Nicole Holmes. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences will be Interim Dean Gibbs Knotts. For the bachelor's degree in anthropology, joining us will be Professor Christine Finnan, Chair of the Department. 
Katie Lorene Crane, cum laude, also meets the requirements for history. Caitlin Danielle Eakin. Stephanie Elizabeth Prine. Madeline Robin Vitetta, magna cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in communication, joining us will be Professor Jennifer Kaufman, chair of the department. Cheyenne N. Abrams. Brendan John Early. Cynthia Islam. Adriana Carol De Castro Luz Magalines. Mackenzie Taryn Morris. Billy Jasmine Powell, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in English, joining us will be Professor Simon Lewis, representing the department. Michael Joseph Fahm. Ann Lillian Sailor Serrell, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in history, joining us will be Professor Phyllis Justice, chair of the department. John Gibbs Parker. Angus S. Salisbury, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in political science, joining us will be Professor Hollis France, interim chair of the department. Emily Amador. Dorian Nicole Fitzhugh. Kaylee S. McAllister, cum laude. Darian Alice Parker, magna cum laude, also meets the requirements for international studies. Ian Matthew Susser. For the bachelor's degree in psychology, joining us will be Professor Dan Greenberg, chair of the department. Brooke Taylor Albee, cum laude. Victoria Ann Ansel. Mara Elizabeth Beavers. Madeline Collins, cum laude. Brittany Tanner Glaze. Robert Ryford Hefka. Lindsay Kennedy, summa cum laude, also meets the requirements for Spanish. Yeah. Stephanie Lynn Mishu. Brittany Mackenzie Morton, summa cum laude. Carly Noel Reinholtz. Yeah. Carolinda Melissa Rodriguez. For the bachelor's degree in sociology, rejoining us will be Professor Christine Finnan, chair of the department. Bailey Tate Fout. Emma Myers Hamilton, magna cum laude. Hunter Edward Kelly. Ramon Primus Macklin. Isadora Ignacia Nilsen Rubio. Rebecca L. Reed, cum laude. Kalia Thomas. For the bachelor's degree in women's and gender studies, Joining us will be Professor Chris Deweld, Chair of the Department. Tessa Mirka Torgovitsky. <laughs> Assisting with the graduates from the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs will be Dean Timothy Johnson. For the bachelor's degree in archaeology, joining us will be Professor Scott Harris, Director of the Program. Apollo Bond also meets the requirements for anthropology. For the bachelor's degree in classics, joining us will be Professor James Newhard, chair of the department. Amy Lynn Barron, summa cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in international studies, joining us will be Professor Malti Peel, chair, director of the program. Grace Ann Albanesius, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for Spanish. <laughs> Douglas Arthur Bryce Christian. Michael Joseph Corey. Callie Fernandez. Denkari Mankara Henderson. Samantha Ann Hernandez also meets requirements for Spanish. Haley Surface. For the bachelor's degree in Spanish, joining us will be Professor Michael Gomez, chair of the department. Matthew Stephen Talley. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Professional Studies will be Associate Dean Nancy Muller. For the bachelor's degree in general studies, Sean Matthew Perez. For the bachelor's degree in professional studies, 
Laura Ann Corelli. Ramona Olivia Edwards. Brian Thomas Getzinger. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Sciences and Mathematics will be Dean Sebastian Van Delden. For the bachelor's degree in biology, joining us will be Professor Seth Pritchard, Chair of the Department. Adam Olson Ackerman. <laughs> Vanessa Mercedes Chu. Cameron M. Copeland. Alessandra Maria Di Tommaso. Caleb Kale Meyer. Victoria Rose Moore, magna cum laude. Lewis Kevin Wen. Lejavius Ransom. Olivia Page Rivera. Matthew Paul Swanson, cum laude, also meets the requirements for the Honors College. The Honors College Certificate and Medal will be awarded by Associate Dean Beth Meyer Bernstein. Sean P. Sweeney. Evan Christopher Thornton. Shoshana D. Weiss. Catherine Sue Zerker, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in chemistry, joining us will be Professor Pamela Riggs Glasgow, Chair of the Department. Brendan Michael Schumberger. For the bachelor's degree in computer information systems, joining us will be Professor Bill Man Manneris, Interim Chair of the Department. Chase B. Robinson. For the bachelor's degree in computer science, Adam Jackson Frazier. <laughs> Megan A. Gould. Amanda Janelle Ginyard. Tyler Montgomery. Anthony J. Morrill, magna cum laude. Alexander Thompson Ross. For the bachelor's degree in marine biology, rejoining us will be Professor Seth Pritchard, chair of the department. Sada Muhammad Marwan Abdelmelik Alhamar. Bailey Faith Berg. For the bachelor's degree in mathematics, joining us will be Professor Martin Jones, representing the department. William K. Cowden. Mary Delisa Scruggs, also meets the requirements for secondary education cognate. For the bachelor's degree in meteorology, joining us will be Professor John Hakala, representing the department. Timothy Grant Farmer, cum laude, also meets the requirements for physics. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees please rise? President Shu, upon successful completion of all degree requirements and with the recommendation of the faculty, I have the honor to present to you the bachelor's degree candidates of 2019. By the authority of the state of South Carolina granted to the Board of Trustees of the College of Charleston and committed to me, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of General Studies, Bachelor of Professional Studies, 
or a Bachelor of Science as earned with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Members of the class of 2019, on behalf of the entire College of Charleston community, congratulations to you on this very special day. I hope that you will look back on your time here as enjoyable, thought-provoking, and life-changing. You are leaving the College of Charleston a stronger place than you found it and I thank you for your many contributions to our university. You now join our alumni family, which includes our commencement speaker you heard from today. These alumni are dedicated to making a difference and being a success. So in your beginning moments as graduates of this great institution, let all the College of Charleston alumni here today welcome and celebrate you. Well, all the College of Charleston alumni on stage and in the audience, please stand and welcome our newest alumni, the class of 2019. Thank you. Please be seated. Graduates, I send you forth with best wishes as you begin the adventures that lie ahead. Wherever you go in the world and whatever you seek to do in service to our society, may you always remember your roots here at the College of Charleston. May you take the skills and lessons that you learned here and use them as you become globally minded citizens. And may you always remember what it means to be a cougar. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me once again in congratulating the class of 2019. Well, all the, uh, please remain standing for the alma mater, led by India Foster. Please rise. The words can be found on the back cover of your program. <laughs> Thank you, India. 
At the conclusion of the ceremony, everyone is invited to attend a reception on the concourse of this arena honoring the class of 2019 and their guests. Family and friends, please remain in place until the recessional is complete. Graduates, once again, congratulations.